In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1, Timothy is warning the churches of seducing spirits, of doctrine of devils. In the book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse 20, all the way to verse 23, we see the Jezebel church has got caught up. And many of these other churches have got caught up in the thing that Timothy warns of. They become uh, caught up and, and drawn away from their where they were in God and in the foundation of God and in the Word of God. They're being drawn away by seducing spirits, sacrificing uh, to uh, devils, and worshiping uh, idols. We see in the book of Revelations chapter 2 and verse 4 and 5, Jesus is warning one of the churches that they have left their first love. Jesus is asking the churches to repent and to turn from their sins. And we see as time continues on, the churches are, are called away uh, by seducing spirits and they're giving in to them. They're they're accepting the lies of the devil and the seducing spirits are drawing them away and they're allowing them to do this. Church, uh, the word tells us to resist the devil and he will flee from you. I promise you that there's going to be no way, no seducing spirit or no doctrine of devils will ever draw me away from the foundation of God because my house is built upon the rock and Jesus Christ is my rock. And he is a sure foundation that is unmovable. And because he is a rock, I am a rock. And I am unmovable. Because I've been serving God since I was eight years old. And there is no way, do you hear me church? No way that I would ever be led away from my first love. Never. And But we see that Jesus is warning these churches that this is what is going to happen to them as they get closer to the great tribulation. And he tells the, the church to remember uh, from where they've fallen and repent and do the first work. That's in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 5. Now church, we're not saved by our works, we're saved by grace. So the work that Jesus is talking about is faith. He's talking about the work of faith. In Revelation chapter 2 and verse 13, we see that uh, Satan is even setting, he's even dwelling in one of the churches and they are killing saints. We see in verse 14 that they are having the doctrine of devils. They are eating things sacrificed to devils. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 20, 21 and 22, they say that the Gentiles sacrifice unto devils. In the book of Revelation chapter 3 and verse 2, uh, on the faith, remember, James tells us, uh, in the book of James, uh, he tells us that faith without works is dead. Faith has works. If you have faith, then you have works. If you pray for something and you believe God to do something, then you will see the manifestation of what your faith did because God will do what you've asked him to do because faith moves God. So Jesus is telling that church uh, that they have fallen away and uh, that their works is not perfect because they don't have faith. And it is faith that has works. So we're not saved by works, church. We're saved by grace. But he is talking here about faith. And to please God, you have to have faith. In the book of Revelation chapter 3 and verse 2, he's talking to the church of Sardis. And he says, I have not found thy works perfect. Did you see that church? I have not found thy works perfect. The book of James chapter 2 verse 18 and 20. Faith without works is dead. See that? You cannot please God without faith. So for a church, a believer, to please God, they must believe in God and believe, and believe His Word and have faith in 
And the, Jesus is telling us that as we get closer to the great tribulation, he's saying the church is falling away from the faith. Uh, um, they don't have faith anymore in God. They're not trusting in God. They're not believing in God. And therefore, you can't trust, you can't please God without that faith. And he's showing that these churches are falling away to doctrines of devils. They're being led away by seducing spirits. And that's what Jesus is warning his churches. He's telling them to repent. He's telling all of them. If they don't repent of the sins that they are doing, they will go into the great tribulation. Now we see the church of Philadelphia. In the book of Revelations chapter 3 and verse 7. Now let's not forget the church of Smyrna. That church is a church that will receive a crown. Uh, they'll be uh, put in prison for 10 days and the devil's going to try them. And uh, But remember what Jesus said. Though you're brought before kings and rulers for his name's sake, don't worry about what you're going to say. Because that that speaks through you will be the Holy Spirit of God. It will be him that speaks to those rulers. And he says that they will receive a crown because they were willing to, they love not their lives unto death. They will, that church was willing to lay down their lives for Jesus Christ because they loved him. Now the Philadelphia church, they're the church of love. The church of brotherly love. Because you see church, they don't condemn nobody. They ain't judging nobody because they love. That's what love does for you. Love don't work. Romans chapter 13 and verse 10. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore love is fulfilling of the law. So what is the church of Philadelphia? They, they were the church that was able to fulfill the law. Jesus gave two, he said two laws were the greatest laws, to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And we see that the Philadelphia church fulfilled the law because they loved. And love worketh no ill to his neighbor. You hear me, church? That's the church that's full of love, that's willing to pray for you, stand in the gap for you, intercede for you, come over there and help you when you need some help, come over there and feed you when you're hungry. And I'm talking about this church even feed the enemies. Jesus tells us to love even our enemies. And if they're hungry, to feed them, and if they're thirsty, to give them drink. He said, in doing so, you're heaping coals upon their head. But we see that the Philadelphia church is the church is full of brotherly love. They'll help anyone. Anyone. Because that's who your neighbor is, church. It doesn't mean your Christian brother. Your neighbor is anyone. That means it doesn't matter what color they are. It doesn't matter what country they come from. It doesn't matter where they live. It doesn't matter what faith or what religion they are. It means that if my neighbor needs help, I'm going to help them because that's the love of God. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The love of God. To love your neighbors. Church, God saw us in our sinful state. So don't start pointing fingers at other people and thinking that you're so much better than they are. Because we all are the same. None is better and none is worse. We are all the same. But God looked at us in our fallen state and he loved us and he continues to love us. And that's the church, my friend, that will fulfill the laws of God is the church that loves one another. Amen. The church that loves Woo, glory, hallelujah, I feel the Holy Spirit of God. Also read the book of Hebrews chapter 13 and 1. 1 John chapter 4 and 8, God is love. 1 John 4 and 18, there's no fear in love. Perfect love cast out all fear. Amen, church. Revelations 13 and 14, he sees the church of Laodicea. Filthy and nasty abomination that is 
has need of nothing. They believe they have it all, but they don't know they naked, they wretched, and they blind. They don't even know it, church, because they're so blinded by the lust of the world and the cares of this world, they can't see anything. They just know they're rich and they got it all. And God tells them in verse 13, I mean, I'm sorry, Revelation 3 and 16, God will spew them out of his mouth. He's going to vomit them up because they make him sick. Revelation 3 and 20, we see they left behind in the great tribulation because Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come unto him and sup with him and he with me. Luke chapter 3 and verse 36 and 37, we see that is after Jesus returns from the wedding that he's going to do that. And we know that Jesus returns after the great tribulation. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 29 and 30. I hope you like that revelation knowledge from the Holy Spirit of God. It is amazing, church. I'll tell you what. It is an amazing word. And I thank the Lord for the Holy Spirit of God that leads me, teaches me, and guides me into all of His ways and all of His truths. Amen. God bless you, church. Go out there today, be blessed, and be a blessing, church. Do you know it is uh, more better to give than to receive? Help those that are in need, church, and bless those around you. Amen. I love you all, my dear precious friends. God bless each and every one of you. In Jesus Christ's most holy name. Amen.